So where do you see the radio pharmaceutical market next five years, big picture? So we think it's an incredibly exciting time, driven by safety and efficacy right, of new products. Mm -hmm. We find ourselves incredibly well positioned to do that, as I mentioned, right? But really for us, uh, prostate, we still have a long road to go uh, for developing better therapies in prostate cancer, right? And that's that's certainly the first play for Radio Farm, and we can do it better, right? So I think the major play, particularly for a company like us, right, that have such a good this PSMA yeah. therapy agent, combination therapies are going to be critical, right? The earlier, the better, uh, particularly with drugs like Radio Pharmaceuticals that have nowhere necessarily nowhere near the safety concerns or the quality of life issues that you know some other products in that space have, right? That's, the, that's I think, the first opportunity. The second one is oncology. There's such an open opportunity there to develop these products yeah. in other cancers. Just beyond cancers. prostate, right? I feel we always talk about Just prostate. Just beyond and... prostate, right? So, um, and we've got, a, you know, the other products in our portfolio, but even with uh, PSMA, you know, this PSMA, as we said, we're getting so much more product to the lesion. There's other lesions, right, that aren't prostate that uh, express that target. We think that's exciting. But us as a company... We're looking at a whole platform here. So we're looking at it much, you know, going broader and broader. We may look at some diagnostics in other areas outside of oncology, as far as we're concerned, because PET imaging is fantastic, right? So why wouldn't you exploit PET imaging, right? But more importantly, um, the therapy opportunities, we've barely scratched the surface at this point in time, right? As I mentioned earlier, uh, the um, the pharmaceutical companies that are not in Radio Farm yet or don't have a plan are really are they serious pharma companies when it comes to oncology? That's the question to ask, right? Because Radio Farm is going to play a big part, not dissimilar to what ADCs did, but without the safety, as I said, so such safety concerns, the efficacy is so good, and that's why you've got people jumping in left, right, and center, right? So that's going to continue to roll out. But the opportunities in other areas is going to be great. And then moving that into a broad range of areas outside of oncology, I think that's an exciting opportunity. And we're starting to now look at that even at clarity. You know, what's next, what's next, what's what's next? And how can we utilize this paradigm that we have for further diseases to, you know, really change the lives of you know, what we see with people with cancer, but, you know, children and adults with cancer, particularly when you're working with the isotopes we are. Yeah. Um, and so do you really think Radio Farm has the opportunity to be kind of become the next immuno-oncology, really, which was the last big, I would say, breakthrough in the in the oncology side of things? Yeah, I, I think – so when you look at immuno-oncology, I think it's a great question. So once again, immuno-oncology was fantastic, but it could have been better. Right. Well, it's still getting better, but yes. It is getting better. And I think the combination of Radio Farm and, and, and IO mm -hmm. is a fantastic opportunity. Yeah, right? that would be exciting. The issue you're going to have here again, uh, uh, isotope dependent, right? The alphas are probably too powerful, right? You wipe out everything when you hit it, mm -hmm. right? In including the including immune system. Including the immune system, yeah. Right? The betas are probably perfectly suited for this. Right, lutetium and copper sixty-seven perfectly suited for combination therapies, where you get this initial effect, you present the IO, and then you're getting this combination of effects. We think that's really exciting, right? And that's really, I think, as I said before, the next frontier is this um, combining different types of assets to work synergistically, hopefully, as the outcome, or at least additive. No, um, absolutely, I think that that makes sense. Yeah, and um, and so, but Radio Farm now has to be taken seriously. You know, it, it is a viable, radiation's been known as a, as a viable uh, treatment alternative. We've just got better in applying it, right? External beam, injecting it straight into cancers, yeah. those sorts of things uh, are, you know, and even though external beam is still a major part of therapy and will continue, right? This way of directly, uh, directly applying radiation to lesions and reducing potential side effects. That means if you're reducing side effects, you're actually maintaining things like quality of life, which is really important. And broadening uh, your applicable market too, right? Exactly, exactly. So um, we think it's exciting and it's only, as I said, barely scratching the surface. There's a couple of products in the market at this point in time when you're looking at therapies. There's a grand opportunity 
to do it better in the first instance. As I said, that's why we're developing best PSMA. We think we can do it better. Uh, but then the range of other opportunities will rely on the supply chains. So copper 67 can be modular, just rolled out. Mm -hmm. As you've got more, you know, more issues and more patience and those sorts of things, you can just modularly increase it. US, Europe, and Asia, as I mentioned before. And uh, copper 64, much easier, right? So we can actually have that di diagnostic coupled with the therapy.